Good afternoon to our next uh, webinar. Today we are going to talk about native backup of everything and instant disaster recovery made with uh, Jovian offsite data protection. So this looks uh, pretty nice and promising and I'm going to prove that uh, you can have a great uh, and perfect uh, computing uh, environment uh, with Jovian DSS and with uh, VMware. Okay, so let us go to what I'm going to uh, introduce the demo environment first, then we will quick start with the offsite data protection service, and then we will uh, go with live demo registering the uh, vCenter server, attaching data stores. This is um, for uh, consistent snapshots in uh, virtual machines. Uh, we will run also VM, um, so Microsoft uh, SQL, one uh, virtual machine will be running a database and that will be just a um, test load. We will need to see whether we are able to back up a running um, MS SQL database, right? So the real application and then we will restore after um, emulated disaster or just restore a machine uh, to our data, data store and we will be checking the consistency. I have a very simple test to check whether the um, MS SQL works. So the very first test is will be to see whether MS SQL is starting and second uh, will be uh, will be checking whether the, all the written records are consistent. Okay. So the, the very rich uh, uh, feature set uh, I'm int introducing every time and uh, this time we will focus just on the feature which is uh, uh, here in the data protection. So that's the asynchronous replication to collocation. This can be also to the same location or even a same uh, Jovian operating system, so to the next pool, for example. Uh, this is uh, very flexible and we can have more destinations. And I'm going also to show today uh, one destination will be local, um, second pool on the local machine, and in parallel, the second destination will be on another machine. This can be in the same building, other building, or even in, uh, via internet, right? So that's the feature set and the uh, idea of replicating uh, data uh, we are trying to show here. I have uh, two slides. So the first slide is showing just a single data store. I have uh, one more slide which is showing exactly the same but we have uh, two data stores here. Of course you can have even 10 or more. Uh, everything will work. Uh, but we are um, trying to show that this is very flexible. So I'm coming to back to the first slide. So how it is working? I have a, uh, on my machine, I have installed the VMware first and the VMware is uh, uh, vSphere um, uh, running the, and VMware is the operating system controlling my server. On VMware server as a first um, uh, virtual machine will be Jovian DSS and the Jovian DSS will be working as a virtual storage appliance. And virtual storage appliance, of course, creating a virtual disk. And uh, this uh, on this virtual disk, we just make a data store and on this data store, we have our virtual machines, right? So everything simple, but the Jovian is able to make uh, snapshots uh, very frequently in our demo we are using snapshots every minute uh, I was testing even every 20 seconds it was working as well but we are doing every minute and these snapshots thanks of offsite data protection service are in background uh, without uh, um, any um, big load are moved to the second location or second um, pool on the same storage, uh, on the same uh, virtual machine, on the same uh, VMware, we will showing this. I don't have such a picture here because that will be too many options and the main um, usage will be sending, of course, the data to 
co-location or another building or another room to, to really protect the data properly. So after having all these uh, snap delta snapshot uh, moved to my destination pool, in case of disaster, I can clone and uh, make a data store on or um, uh, clone and uh, add to the data store. And on this data store, I can uh, browse directory and I can select a virtual machine, maybe single or more, which I need to recover and add them to inventory and start. So this is how it works. The idea is quite simple, but next to uh, offsite data protection um, uh, snapshot, which are made on the storage and moved uh, um, in asynchronous way to another uh, secondary site, we also, these blue lines are snapshots which are created using uh, applications programmer interface. So agentless are created on the virtual machines. So we are making so-called pre-snap command. So before a real snapshot in the Jovian is made, we are sending request to selected virtual machines because not everyone uh, really needs such a, a consistent snapshot. And we will prove that even Microsoft uh, SQL running in transaction way will not really need this snapshot. Maybe some application running on top uh, on this will, but this depends on the application. So let's assume that we have an application which is requiring such a, a consistent snapshot for the backup or for disaster recovery. So then we are sending the command to the virtual machine. Virtual machine must have uh, tools installed. So VMware tools must be installed and the tools are triggering snapshot using a VSS, so volume shadow service uh, from Microsoft and uh, making a disk consistent. In case of Linux machine, that will be the freeze command, uh, which will be making the disk consistent, right? And uh, so this takes a while, uh, maybe seconds, maybe even minute if you have a heavy load. Then the snapshot on the ZFS is uh, started or created and the delta between previous snapshot and the this snapshot is moved to the collocation, right? So in the collocation we have all the snapshot history and we can with one click we can just clone the volume if we need, uh, let's say, to restore a single machine or more or everything, uh, this doesn't matter. Uh, it's, the process is the same. If I want to restore single machine or if I w uh, want to restore all, let's say, 100 virtual machines that I have. Okay. And uh, there is no extra uh, work because the whole volume, everything is replicated. Right. So the next slide, which I was already explaining, I just have a two uh, data stores, so uh, one virtual volume and uh, one data store and another one. So uh, this replication can work in parallel, of course, right? Okay, and my mm, environment here, it is not exactly what I'm having, but uh, let's say uh, I have a v VMware and then on VMware I have a Jovian uh, working here, so I can, one of the possible uh, configurations is shown here that I have a cluster and then I will need to put another VMware server also with Jovian running for the disaster recovery. But let's say this is my cluster or let's say in my setup I can use for the demonstration I can use one server or a second server even they use the same JBot. So uh, everything is possible and here we in order to um, explain everything, we will show, uh, we will need to show every option which is possible. That will be plenty of them. Okay, so I'm switching back now to, I'm switching to my demonstration environment. And as I mentioned already, I have a two uh, VMware servers. So maybe I will just start the physical. So the server which is uh, running on IP 192.168.0.30. And the one more, uh, 192.168.0.40, right? So I have uh, two servers. And on the first server, I'm also running a vCenter. 
So uh, this center is very nice. And now I will connect, you see, that's not the physical machine, that's the vCenter IP, so 192.168.0.16. And to this vCenter, I was adding only the first machine at this moment, right? So, and uh, what we are running, we are running uh, few machines on the data store, which is a local iSCSI-1, right? And this machine is every minute we are creating and deleting, uh, removing the snapshot. So you see, it's just uh, creating the, the snapshot and uh, one minute ago the snapshot was removed. So when I go to snapshot and uh, snapshot manager, uh, when one snapshot is created, we'll see that the snapshot it will appear here. So just exactly it happened, auto snap on this machine and the timestamp is here. Few seconds later, this snapshot with, will disappear. I am running already, you see it disappeared. I am running already a um, database test. So this database, uh, the database uh, test is running exactly on this Windows machine. So maybe I will show you. That is 192.168.0.246. That's the IP of this machine. Maybe I stop this test and I will introduce you how this test works. So this is a very simple uh, test. You see it is the IP uh, exactly in this machine. And what I'm doing, I'm just uh, writing to this database the very simple record. Uh, so like uh, adding this data to the database. And maybe I can stop it and run with PowerShell one more time. And there is another script which will be making proof so we will prove whether all the records are exactly um, matching these records which we were writing so we have option to prove whether the, uh, there is no corruption with the data right so now i was starting this test again in loop so i'm um, writing to this virtual machine and uh, i am creating snapshots every minute of this virtual machine, right? So who is requesting this? When I will switch to my Jovians, so the, the first Jovian and the second Jovian, maybe I will show you where they're exactly placed. So on the first server, we have a local uh, VSA, so that's the Jovian. This Jovian uh, with this 32 IP uh, address on the end, it's running on the first machine. First machine has, uh, of course, PCI Express um, HBA, and this HBA is uh, moved as a private device to this Jovian. So the Jovian on the first is managing the disks which are in this VMware machine um, by itself. Okay, same situation we have here. On the right side, we have in advanced settings the LSI HBA and our Jovian exactly identical configuration. This PCI device is attached to this Jovian. So we have the exactly same um, management. On the first Jovian, I was configuring two pools, pool zero, that's my pool zero. And the pool one, or oh, pool zero dash disaster recovery, right? So on the production pool, I have few mirrors and some write lock. And on my disaster recovery pool, it's a very pool, just single disk, right? I could make be add more disk. I have just one disk left, maybe make mirror, but doesn't matter. I was making just this very simple stuff, single disk. Okay, so, so here I was uh, defining two iSCSI targets, uh, actually one iSCSI target here, and there are two um, Zvols, both 
um, almost same size here showing uh, 4.88 terabyte and these pools are imported as uh, data stores on our left machine so that's the one and that's the second one right and on this zero I have some um, other machines and on the dash one I have exactly this webinar machine so I have few Windows machines and also this um, MS SQL SQL server so I have another one which is running here there is a node auto snap skip and here there is a node auto snap skip uh, from 16.0, so uh, 5 past uh, 4 uh, till midnight, right? So I can also set a time when I want to skip. So if I want, if I do not want to skip at this moment a bit, but a bit later, I can edit this and change the time. So if I will go to uh, task and uh, events, okay? So you will see here that the, it was uh, 4 p.m. 3, it was and the one, it was uh, running, but then uh, it was stopping and it was no more running this because I have this time selected, right? And uh, this machine, I have no comment, so this machine will uh, run the uh, snapshot and remove snapshot every minute. Okay, so my pool zero uh, has snapshots running. That's uh, snapshots. You see, we have the task every minute, but not exactly every minute we have. Let's say 13 is missing, 15 is missing, uh, 16, 17 here is every minute. Uh, we will uh, in soon say why. So that's my source. Here is my destination. Okay, there are a bit more, and uh, here there is another destination which is on different server, and I have also a bit more. So now I will show you the command which was creating this task because the uh, offsite data protection, in order to create this, it is not on the GUI yet. Uh, we just go to help. And uh, we can go to offsite data protection service in the help. And here the service is described uh, how it works and uh, what uh, about the important nodes and so on. So we need to go to the command line. So the when I just issue the command, a pelling uh, and uh, key PPK, which uh, private key, uh, which I need to create. Then the port and the username is CLI and the IP address of my machine and just ODPS, I will get the help. So help of all the syntax of the commands. So I have the commands like attach backup node, detach list and so on. And I have also for a ES6, I have a ES6 register, unregister uh, list, attach data store and so on. So at this moment, when I just the set I will see what was defined so what I was defining here I was defining the backup node which is 192.168.042 uh, that's the default plan uh, which I'm not using at this moment and on the task we have a source is a pool 0 0 0 1 right so I will come back that's our source and that's our zvol 01, which is uh, iSCSI-1 pool, which is our source, right? And the one of the destination uh, is 192.168.042, so that's the another server, pool 1, zvol 01, okay? And here there is a plan, last 20 minutes every one minute. And the lo local destination is pool 0 uh, dash dr, and there is also zvol 01 here, and the retention is 15 minutes. Okay, so if I would like to recreate this, I can 
or maybe also I show that I'm attached to set uh, ESX. So then I will have uh, settings which is on ASX side. So uh, this command takes a bit longer because all the virtual machines are listed also in this uh, command. And we will see which server is registered and which data store is attached uh, in our offsite data protection service. Okay, I will need to scroll back. So registered VM server is 192.168.0.16, so that's our vCenter. And uh, the data center is a H8 data center, and the registered data store is local.iscasi-1, right? I will uh, show step by step how to reach this situation. So the first command, uh, I can just delete this task. So I was having this task already. Okay, that's the command. I was also preparing and copying these commands, which some of them which I'm using here. So the pelling and dash i, that's the PPK port and so on. Delete task, and then in the task I put the as a task name is the the, the source of this task, right? Okay, so you see I have this command odps delete task and the pool 0, zvol 0, 1. This command will be deleting the task. Maybe I will still not issue this command right now. I will issue the set and you see the source we put and uh, the, the path as a, as a task name. So the pool dash 0, zvol 0, 1. Okay, so if I want to delete it, I will not type, but find this command will be faster. So the delete uh, dash task and the pull the zero slash zero zero one. Okay. Okay. So the task is successfully deleted. What happened when I put the on the set command now? On the set command. We see still the backup nodes is there, but there is there are no tasks. What happened on the set ESX? So when the task was deleted, the, the server was not unregistered, but there is no data store attached. So the server is still registered. Okay, so I can unregister this server. Uh, maybe just put e ODPS and then I can say unregister, so ESX. Okay. I was unregistered. So now when I want to set means list the settings, uh, there is nothing there. So we can recreate this task new. I will not type because that will be quite long typing. I was creating this task today. Okay, so that's the command which I will be using. So create task, source, plan, destination, first plan, next destination, and another plan, and on the end, M buffer. So I will uh, show this command here one more time. So the full command is uh, shown here. So the create task, that's the first source. Uh, then there is a plan for this source. Then there is a, in destination section, we have a first destination. Then we have a plan for this de destination. Then we have a next destination is already on different server. Then we put IP colon and uh, uh, destination path. 
and the plan for this destination. You, so you see, every destination can have a different plan. That's good because maybe on the destination we have a more space and we want, you want snapshot, let's say, not just the last month, but maybe last six months, right? If we keep the snapshot from the last six months, so all the deleted data need to have a space. That's why maybe on your destination you will have more space. So I will recreate this task right now. Task has been created, so when I will be uh, putting the command uh, to show me the set settings, uh, I see that the source is pool 0, 0, 0, 1, and the uh, one destination and the second destination with the retention plan. I have very simple retention plan, so uh, because then we are able to see on the GUI at once that this rotation is working, and the snapshots on the source which are older than 10 minutes are removed, on the first destination, local destination snapshots which are older than 15 minutes are removed, and on the collocation, the snapshots which are older than 20 minutes are disappearing, right? So I will show you this one more time. That's my source. So here I'm keeping snapshots only which are 10 minutes old, right? Now it was rotation, so the GUI was refreshed, and that's why I need to... Okay, the 14 was there and now after, uh, okay, 14 is still there, but now uh, 14 disappear, you see, and I, I don't see 10 snapshots because even my task works every hour and because I'm already make some traffic and uh, writing uh, data to the database, Sometimes this process cannot be done within one minute. So here it can be two minutes or maybe even three minutes between the snapshots, right? So if you have a lower traffic, then they are done really every uh, one minute. That's my first destination. Here is a few uh, minutes more, five minutes more. Okay, and that's my collocation and it is a bit more. But the last snapshot on the collocation is uh, 4 p.m. 29, and my last snapshot on source is exactly the same. So you see, it was already replicated. So now uh, we are running the MS SQL all the time. We have already eight, over 8,000 records. Uh, we can think about uh, whether this backup works, whether can we can use it as a disaster recovery. Uh, but uh, this I'm too early because I want to show the snapshot from VMware. So now my snapshot in ZFS are working, but I didn't attach the server to the VMware yet. So the snapshots on the virtual machines are not working yet, right? So what we need to do, we need to uh, register the server. Okay, it was unregistered, so I can uh, register now. Uh, and I can register 18, uh, 16, right? Maybe I will copy this command. Oh, register ES6, okay. I can copy the whole command. That's my password. Okay, so edit and paste. Okay, so the command is ESX register, IP address, user, and that's the vSphere user, so administrator and vSphere.local, and my password, okay? So I can uh, register the server. Server is registered already, so I can use the ESX list. Okay, the server is already registered, but uh, the 
data store is not attached yet. I need to say on which data store all powered on machines need to make a consistent snapshot, except these machines which are having add this command, this comment, sorry, which looks like this. So auto snap skip time or auto snap skip then will be just 24 hours all the time okay this uh, doesn't have any uh, things like auto snap skip then it should work so it is not working yet because the, we didn't attach the uh, volume yet so i will copy the command again so this command is again esx attach data store then we say source pool source zivol uh, then uh, we say just data store and we uh, need to say which one so here I was having a 30 but I will need to change to 16 H a data store and the local uh, iSCSI one that will be all the same uh, previously I was attaching this to the vCenter directly and now I will just attach I was registering the vCenter right so I will attach vCenter okay that is attached so when I will just try which command I can list data stores um, a6 list data stores i can uh, use this command or es6 list it is listing me the registered data servers uh, okay or i can just to make it faster just say set settings esx it will uh, also do the query so esx query is listing all the virtual machines but esx set is listing all the virtual machine and is showing which server is registered and is showing which data store is attached so we see now that the 16 is registered and the data store local uh, dot iscasi dash one from the data center ha data center is attached Okay, you see that's the HA data center, that's the name of the data center. Okay, so now you see magic works because now the uh, snapshots are created and removed already, right? So it is, uh, we see that it is working. Uh, we can also uh, go to snapshots and uh, see uh, snapshots is created. And uh, just few seconds later, uh, when the ZFS snapshot is done and transferring uh, replicating process is started uh, after post command this snapshot is removed so now uh, when we will want to clone a snapshot on the storage then this um, clone will have a virtual machine uh, win007 which will have a consistent snapshot inside so we'll have option to revert uh, to this snapshot and start the machine with the uh, consistent disk situation, right? So maybe I'll have a look. Oh, it's already 11,000 records, so pretty a lot. And uh, let's say something happened with the Win007 um somebody was maybe deleting or some other crash happened and i need to recover my data from my backup right so one uh, step maybe i can recover the data from my local data store but maybe recovering the data from the uh, remote destination is um, maybe more interesting for us right so here there is a next minute uh, or next uh, time is coming because it's not really every minute you see it was 34 now 36 so 35 was not done because it was skipping uh, i can show you also there is a command status which is showing
the status of this. So it was a skipping round. So you see the, the 35 was skipping because it was not finished yet, right? So uh, how to restore our data now? Uh, that will be the question. So we go to our destination, okay? On the destination, um, uh, it's uh, this DSS uh, 42, Jovian DSS 42, right? So that's here. So I, I will have to go to my Jovian GUI, and uh, that's the pool one, my destination, and that's the that's the, the snapshots which I'm making. So the last one, which is available for me, is uh, 1636, right? So I can just clone. Put the name of this clone. It's not really important. Uh, maybe you can put that uh, clone. Maybe 1636. Uh, but it's not really important. Attached to a target. I was already defining the target. Uh, IQN, uh, you see it was in June. A, a target is empty target. And I can add. Let us see whether the target was really empty. Yes, this clone target now has a one Z vol inside, and that's exactly clone 1636, which we were just cloning. Okay, so now I my destination server is exporting such a target with such a volume inside. So let us go to our production server, and in production server. I was already um, in storage adapters. Uh, I will show you that I was already adding this uh, target before. So 192.168.042 and the clone. So now it was empty. And when I rescan, then this volume should appear here after the rescan. That's the, exactly the case. The volume just appeared. So I can and now try to add to my data store. So that will be kind of snap volume uh, and let us see whether it works. I will tell you it will not work because there is a bug in the vCenter, uh, but there is a workaround, uh, luckily. We will need to uh, make a ticket at VMware and probably ask them about uh, fixing this bug. So uh, here I will uh, select this volume, which I want to add. I want to re-signature, right? So uh, I cannot keep uh, the signature because the exactly same volume is already uh, running on this machine. So I want to give the new signature, new UUID. And uh, this should work, but unfortunately it does not work. Okay, so we will have an error saying that the same volume with the same UUID is existing already. That's the case. But the workaround is very simple. You just go directly to the vSphere and uh, do it in vSphere. So in the storage adapters, you see that the, the volume is there. So I just go here at the storage and uh, repeat the steps. Great. Assign new signature. This is in progress now. So we can expect this local iSCSI one, but with the snap name on the beginning. Yes, that's the case. Everything is done. So now we go to our vCenter. And we see this volume. So this volume is exact copy from this point uh, in time when the snapshot was made from this uh, SCSI-1. So I can browse and then I can select my uh, Win7 and I can try to add this to inventory, right? So I will put Win007 uh, and Restart, for example, uh, it's not really something unique. Okay, 
I will put in our okay so the machine is restored already and is coming with the alarm that the Mac conflict of course because this machine is exact copy of our original machine right so the Mac address we can see it's here it's 6e60 on the end and this machine has exactly the same MAC address, right? So that is exactly here. So in if I want to start this machine, I will need to change it. Let's say 61, doesn't matter. Okay, so I change it. And in this case, I remove the conflict. So then I can acknowledge or delete this alarm. Okay, so now this machine should be okay. I should be ready to start this machine already. This machine will be starting with a different um, IP, right? Because it has a new MAC address. So I can start. Power on. Okay. So this machine is starting now. It starts maybe a few seconds longer because there is a new MAC address, so these need to be registered in Windows. After changing the, the MAC address, is like changing the card. Okay, so uh, in snapshots, we see that there is a snapshot inside, right? But I was starting this machine without reverting the snapshot. And this machine now has an IP 240, right? So my original was 246 and my restored machine is 240. So this is still running. I can stop it for the uh, very short time. And now I can check what is with 240. So I go to my uh, check. Okay. Change for 240. And run this check. And it is showing me that at this moment it was 12,079 records written and everything is uh, fine without error. So look what happened. I did not use, I did not revert uh, the, the snapshot, right? So the snapshot is here, right? And I did not revert. And uh, so the... Um, the storage snapshot was good enough to have MS SQL starting because my MS SQL is running in transactional mode, right? So in this case, actually, I can live even without a virtual machine snapshot, just a storage snapshot is fine. That's great. But if, if in, in case when you need this snapshot, then of course we need to go to and uh, revert to this stage. So when I'm reverting to this snapshot, of course, the machine will be powered off now. And then I can power on again. Oh, of course, uh, after reverting the snapshot, we have a MAC address conflict again, because uh, in the snapshot was exactly the uh, same. Okay, it was uh, exactly the, I need to power off. And we need to edit. Okay, I change to 61. Then I can delete this alarm. So that's another proof that the um, restoring the snapshot was really working, right? Because it was also restoring the MAC address. Okay.
you see the time which happened from the uh, time I decided to uh, discover from a disaster was maybe a minute. Okay, so down, now machine is up and running. So that's my original machine. This machine has a 240. I can now rerun. And you see exactly uh, uh, that's uh, what we expect when I reverted at this time, the snapshot on the uh, virtual machine was made was an uh, 11,937 records. And the previous run was when I didn't revert the snapshot. So the, it was a, a bit later made the snapshot on the storage, right? So the reverted uh, snapshot, uh, the consistent snapshot from the virtual machine was less records written because it was a bit earlier. So the, this how it works. Of course, we can uh, we can imagine situation when I'm losing everything of my primary storage, and I have a bad time, and uh, I need to use my secondary storage as uh, my production. Uh, how we can do it? How we can make a usage of this? Uh, very easy. Uh, we can just uh, go to host, go to configuration and uh, storage adapters. In the storage adapters, uh, we need to go to the recovery and connect any clone. So I can go to my machine maybe i will show you create one more clone so that will be here it was a clone zero clone or i can say clone one or maybe new one month doesn't matter so okay clone one I will not add any volume to this uh, target because that will be I need to create an empty target for my clone. So you see the clone is created and the number of Z volts is zero. And now I go to my snapshots and let's say now it's disaster. So happened now it's a 1648. Okay, so we can just clone. attach to target of course I can attach also later so that's the clone one which I want to use it done so we have a clone one that's the target maybe I will copy this target name good and uh, we go to the uh, our secondary servers which now will be working as a disaster recovery so 192 uh, 168042 so our local Jovian is exporting this clone oh, I was using zero because it's a management port I can also use a different port which are exporting uh, maybe extra ports for exporting, but in this case it uh, works perfect. So I have my volume. Then we go to a storage and we add. Okay. Just in case I will also use a new signature. Maybe later I will add this with vCenter to another uh, to other hosts to cluster. It is uh, resignature re working now. This um, will work because th this one is not connected to vCenter at this moment. I'm connecting directly. So that's the volume, and I can already browse and uh, select my machines maybe i want uh, first wind 2012 
Okay, so just add to inventory. That's it, and machine is ready to start. So it, if I will, don't need to explain, and I have already target uh, and uh, data uh, store uh, the, the how to say in configuration. I forgotten the, the storage adapter already configured. I can do it really within seconds to get my machines uh, ready for production, right? And what happened if I want, uh, let's say, on the first machine, uh, this restored machine is working on this snap, which is actually uh, physically working on my disaster recovery machine. And what happened when I want this on my local in production? Very easy. Thanks of the, uh, the vCenter running here, I can change the data store. Okay, so my destination uh, will be this my original production volume let's say i lost only machine I, I didn't lose the volume okay and i can just start or re relocate so in this case the machine in production will be moved from my disaster recovery server to my production server that was the one case and this case was when i was losing my primary se server, I, I need to run my production now on the disaster recovery server. Of course, from the disaster recovery server, when, let's say, first machine disappear, you can start ODPS and move the data in the background to the uh, new from scratch started machine, and then you can be also redundant and ready for the next disaster. Okay, so my presentation was uh, actually done. Uh, that it shows that the backups is uh, running uh, quite perfect, very frequent, and anytime I'm uh, ready to recover any machine or all machines, or also I can change production to the different server. And very nice uh, information that this is not heavy duty tasks. If you compare to the third party backup software, they run very heavy database they are really very demanding applications which makes impossible to make the backup during production. Here I can prove that I can make the backups almost every minute and uh, also I can decide which machines need to, be, uh, need to have the consistent backup and which not because in many cases you, can, you have seen that transactional mode of the MS SQL does not require uh, the quizzing snapshot um, from the machine, which is uh, done in production, but at the moment, the maybe one or two minutes when the snapshot was started and not removed yet, the machine will work a bit slower. We didn't notice uh, this on our uh, task because this task is not so heavy duty. So when I was running this one, so we have, uh, when it starts, we have seen that the when the snapshots are active or not active uh, this task is uh, just running and it's not easy to notice uh, uh, that it's affected but uh, of course uh, uh, you can see uh, maybe some uh, differences on the speed okay so we had a perfect uh, demonstration today uh, thank you very much for taking part and uh, I will be happy to see you on the next webinar. So thank you very much and bye.